Hello Saints, peace, grace, and love in Christ Jesus be with all of you. You know, one of the topics that I've wanted to study with you guys is the topic of Daniel's 70th week. You know, Daniel's 70th week is full of information. So much information that we could spend weeks, months, several months, several weeks on this subject alone. But in this study, uh, we're going to be highlighting the larger aspects of this time of trouble called Daniel's 70th week. Now, before I begin, I need to stress the importance of understanding what right division and dispensations are. Right division and dispensations are the keys to understanding God's word written for and to us today the body of Christ Jesus. In fact, I always tell people, especially especially new Christians and even some older Christians that have been confused most of their life like I was, you know, the very first thing that you need to do is study and and you need to know before studying God's word is you need to know right division and dispensations it's so very important that you completely understand what dispensations are and what right division is and the reason why it's so important is because w without understanding right division and God's and how God deals with mankind dispensationally without understanding that you just won't understand what the body of Christ is, who we are, and why we're here, and where we're going into the future. And you'll be easily swayed into believing all the false teachings out there. You'll be confused. You'll be insecure about, uh, you know, your salvation in Christ. And you'll be led to believing tradition instead of truth, okay? And the reason why I know this is all the false teaching out there has one common denominator, if you will. They don't teach dispensationally. They have no idea how to study God's Word, uh, you know, rightly divided. They all have this common thread, this common denominator. They all teach without rightly dividing God's Word. The Apostle Paul warns Timothy about this in 2 Timothy 2.15. He says, Paul says to Timothy, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now, one technique that I use when studying God's word, whenever reading a passage or a phrase, etc., I, I always ask the questions, who, what, where, when, how, and why? And I suggest you adopt the same method as well. And you'll notice that your understanding of the Bible will increase tremendously if you use just that one technique. All right, so on to our study. Now, following the pattern of asking those questions, who, what, where, when, how, why, and all that, we'll incorporate that technique to the study here today on the topic of Daniel's 70th week. Well, we're going to be looking at the following in this study. The first thing I'm going to look at is why is it called Daniel's 70th week? Where do the 70 weeks come from? And we're going to look at the purpose for those seven years. And we're going to look at God's agenda versus Satan's agenda, the difference. And Jesus revealing the four seals prior to the book of Revelation. I bet you didn't know that, that Jesus actually revealed the four seals before he revealed it to John. And we're going to be taking a look at that. We're also going to look at the falling away, the delusion, the, the two witnesses, the 144,000 Jewish males. We're going to look at the second coming of our Lord Jesus. We're going to look at uh, Revelation 12, the sign, the woman, um, and I made a video on that, Revelation 12 sign, that's coming up next year, 
the 23rd of September 2017 so we're gonna do a recap on that sign in this video we're also gonna look at the parables that Jesus spoke about Daniel's 70th week the second coming the millennial reign and also we're gonna look at who the Church of Philadelphia is and how their their role plays out in Daniel's 70th week now we start the period known as the last week or again Daniel's 70th week which is a seven-year period foretold by all the prophets okay and the prophets told us in the Old Testament and also in the four Gospels and in Hebrews all the way through Revelation that it, this takes place just prior to the second coming of Christ Jesus and we know from prophecy and from the words of our Lord Jesus that this seven-year period is going to be horrific even worse than the flood of Noah even worse than the entire globe being flooded that destroyed 99.999 percent of all flesh on the earth Daniel 70th week is going to be worse than that now if I asked if I was asked to summarize Daniel's 70th week in just one sentence I do it this way God wants to save the nation of Israel and Satan wants to erase every Jew off the face of the earth okay and why does Satan want all the Jews gone you might ask well it's because in his warped mind he thinks that if he can erase the Jews then he can erase God's plan for the future by erasing the recipients of God's promises and the covenants that he made with the nation of Israel so this period of tribulation is where God allows Satan to destroy as much as possible but we know God will by grace keep a remnant for himself okay to prevent their complete annihilation from the earth now one way God has dealt with his people is he's always given them prophecies and signs of their future the nation of Israel always looked for signs of the coming Messiah okay and they've been looking for signs now for over 6,000 years in 1 Corinthians 1 22 to 24 for the Jews require a sign and the Greeks seek after wisdom in Genesis 1 14 and God said let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years in Isaiah 19 verses 19 to 20 in that day there will be an altar to the Lord in the midst of the land of Egypt and a pillar to the Lord at its border and it will be for a sign for a witness to the Lord of hosts in the land of Egypt for they will cry to the Lord because of the oppressors and he will send them a savior and a mighty one and he will deliver them in Jeremiah which has set signs and wonders in the land of Egypt even unto this day in Revelation 12 we read and there appeared a great wonder in heaven a woman clothed with the Sun and the moon under her feet and upon her head a crown of 12 stars and she being with child cried travailing in pain and pained to be delivered in Micah 5 3 therefore will he give them up until the time that she which travaileth hath brought forth then the remnant of his brethren shall return unto the children of Israel and he shall stand and feed in the strength of the Lord in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God and they shall abide for now shall he be great unto the ends of the earth and this man shall be the peace when the Assyrian shall come into our land and when he shall tread in our palaces then shall we raise against him seven shepherds and eight principal men now in Micah 5 3 is it's very interesting now remember 
what Paul said about Israel being made partially blind until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. In Romans 11.25, For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. Okay, notice, Paul says, they would be blind until the fullness of the Gentiles are complete. Also notice, Micah says that Israel is given up, made blind, until the time that she travaileth hath brought forth. And in here, in Revelation 12, we see her bringing forth, okay? Could it be that the fullness of the Gentiles and the completeness of Israel being given up comes to a, a close with the sign of Revelation 12? All I can say is, we shall see. But it's surely looking very interesting to me. Now, as I, as I promised, we're going to take a look again at the woman, the sign of the woman that happens in Revelation 12. Um, a few months ago, I shared that video with you about something very interesting that happens next year on September 23rd. And a few facts concerning this event. Before I show you exactly what's going to happen, uh, we'll, we'll be using this, the program called Stellarium, which, by the way, you can download for free if you want to take a look at this and play around with this program uh, you're you can download it for free and you get all the information for yourself okay now the first thing concerning this sign is extremely important is that it only happens one time on the 23rd of September 2017 the second thing that's very important about this is it cannot be found going back 6,000 years it cannot be found going forward a thousand years. This sign must contain all the items that we read in Revelation 12. If it doesn't contain everything in Revelation 12, then it's not the sign. Okay? She must be clothed in the sun. Understand, she's only clothed in the sun once a year. This happens in September and October, the, begin the ending and the beginning. The moon has to be under her feet. The 12 stars, okay, which are nine permanent stars that make up the constellation of Leo, plus three roaming stars. Nine plus three is 12. So it gives her 12 stars. She's crowned with 12 stars, which, which mean uh, the 12 tribes of Israel. And also, she has to be giving birth to Jupiter, which is the planet Messiah. Okay, Jupiter is a representation uh, as the Jewish Messiah. Now, let's take a look at Stellarium real quick. And I'm going to show you, we're going to recap this uh, just shortly, just quickly. We're going to go through this once again. Now, the date here, you notice at the bottom of the screen is... October 22nd 2016 and here we see the woman and here we see the constellation of Leo okay these are the two constellations that play out with this sign now we're in October and we're on the 22nd and I'm gonna go through this 24th 25th and here we see the moon going by I made it much larger so we can see it uh, and notice that in the month of November is where Jupiter, here's Jupiter, is where Jupiter goes into the womb of the Virgin. Okay, and something else that I, I found pretty interesting is that the moon, starting when Jupiter goes inside of Virgo, the moon actually, if you count the number of times before she gives birth, the moon goes by 12 times which is interesting because she's crowned with 12 stars and uh, it also relates to the 12 tribes of Israel so we're gonna go through starting November 26 and I believe that uh, she probably 
the sign of conception was right around the 20th or the 21st. But we'll start out here and we're going to go through quickly. Jupiter is in the womb and Jupiter stays in the womb for the complete uh, term of pregnancy. Okay, which is interesting. Now, you can see the moon going by and we're in February, March, and we're going to go through April and May. And you notice that Jupiter stays inside her womb during this time. Now we're already in July and we're going to go all the way up to September. We keep an eye on Jupiter, it's still in the womb. And we're in August now, I'm going to slow it down, we're in September. Now notice in September, on the 23rd, specifically, there's the 23rd, here is the one sign that happens one time uh, ever, okay? Here is the moon under her feet, okay? Now I made it larger, so it's on the side of her feet, but if it was actual size, it would be under her feet. Jupiter, she's giving birth to Jupiter. Here's Jupiter, all right? She's clothed in the sun. Now remember, I said this only happens at one point uh, each year. And it happens at the end of September, the beginning of, of October. So, you know, some people say that this sign happened in April, uh, uh, you know, 4 BC in the month of April. Well, that's impossible because in the month of April, she can't be clothed in the sun. This is the sign of Virgo. It happens in September, October. Okay, so September 23rd, 923, 2017. She's got the moon at her feet, under her feet. She's giving birth to the Messiah planet. She's clothed in the sun. Now here's the other part of this, uh, of what John saw in Revelation 12, is the constellation of Leo normally makes up is made up of nine stars one two three four five six seven eight and nine okay and here we have three roaming stars which that's what they're called in the Bible roaming stars and we have Mercury Mars and Venus. Notice Venus, Mars, and Mercury. Okay, they make up the additional three stars needed for a complete twelve stars. Okay, she's crowned by twelve stars with the sun at her back, the moon under her feet, and she's giving birth to Jupiter, the Messiah planet. This happens on 923. 2017 and it's the only time this takes place so I just wanted to recap that with you and that way uh, for maybe you didn't see that other video but there is another video on my channel and I go through this entire thing a little bit more in depth so if you want to take a look at that be my guest now back to our study uh, the prophet Jeremiah calls the Daniel's 70th week, this horrific time period, Jacob's trouble, okay? And we see this in Jeremiah 37, 30, uh, verse 7. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. Now, Jacob's trouble is also called a time of great tribulation. Jesus says, in Matthew and we see it twice in the book of Revelation uh, let's take a look here uh, real quick at Matthew 24 21 for then shall be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time no nor ever shall be now before we move on uh, going back to the Revelation 12 sign that happens on 923. I just want to say that uh, this sign could be it. Now we know that signs are for 
the Jews. Okay, they require signs. All right, so this isn't particularly for the body of Christ. We 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 live by faith. Okay, we live by the unseen. All right, that's that's uh, the body of Christ. But the Jews require a sign, especially the non-believing Jews. All right, that's that's who Daniel's seventieth week is for. Mostly non-believing Jews at the beginning, okay? But considering this, the sign of the woman, um, my personal belief is that this is going, it indicates that Daniel's 70th week is about to begin. And the Jewish nation will be able to see this when they look up into the sky. They'll be able to see this sign and read the book of Revelation and know that something big is about to happen now what does that mean for the body of Christ in relation to the rapture well I don't know I'm not gonna I, I, I don't set dates I'm not a prophet so I can't I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that the rapture is gonna happen on this date um, but we know that if Daniel's 70th week it begins right around this time period then the rapture happens before that so that's that's all I have to say as far as dates is the rapture could happen at any moment okay so please keep that in mind uh, as we continue now in Revelation 2 22 behold I will cast her into a bed and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation except they repent of their deeds in Revelation 7 verse 14 and I said unto him sir thou knowest and he said to me these are they which came out of the of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb now this period is also known as the day of the lord not to be confused with the day of christ the day of christ is for us the church this includes the rapture and our participation at the judgment seat of Christ and the day of the Lord takes place after the rapture and it's for unbelievers to punish the wicked and to purify the nation of Israel the prophecy of the day of the Lord is written all throughout the Old Testament the four Gospels and the last books of the Bible the books from Hebrews through Revelation now God gives the world over 2,000 years of grace and that ends with the rapture and how do we know it ends look at Romans 11 25 for I would not brethren that ye should be ignorant of this mystery lest ye should be wise in your own conceits that blindness in part is happen to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in so we see here that Israel was made partially blind until the harvest of the body of Christ is complete the fullness of the Gentiles it's it's very important to notice that we see no mention of the body of Christ there the mystery gospel in prophecy or in the book of Revelation for that matter in fact the only books in the Bible that you'll see the body of Christ in is in Paul's books Romans through Philemon the four Gospels in the Old Testament and the books of Hebrews and James and Peter and John and Jude and Revelation are all about the nation of Israel all about the day of the Lord the second coming the earthly kingdom the kingdom of heaven and the 1000 year millennial reign of Christ Jesus on earth this 70th week is for Daniel's people it's specifically for the nation of Israel okay look at Daniel 9 here at the beginning of thy supplications the commandment came forth and I am come to show thee for thou art greatly beloved here the angel is talking to to Daniel therefore understand the matter and consider the vision seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city now notice here seventy weeks are determined upon 
thy people. Thy people here are Daniel's people. Daniel is obviously Jewish of the nation of Israel. And so this is talking about thy people being the nation of Israel. Okay. And upon thy holy city, the city of Jerusalem, to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah the Prince shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. The street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary and the end thereof shall be with a flood and unto the end of the war desolations are determined. And he shall confirm the covenant. Here we're talking about the Antichrist. And he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week, seven years. And in the midst of the week, in the middle of the seven years, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate even until the consummation and that determined shall be poured out, poured upon the desolate. So, what this all boils down to is the seven year tribulation period, Daniel's 70th week, isn't for the body of Christ. Not even so much for the Gentile nations, but surely the Gentile nations are going to be affected because the entire earth will feel the wrath of the Lord during this time. Daniel's 70th week is prophesied with to the nation of Israel in mind. Okay, God is picking back up where he left off with Stephen. We know the nation of Israel was given extra time to repent after the crucifixion. And their deadline was when Stephen prophesied to the Jews. Once again, they reject the message and they kill their prophet by stoning him to death. Then we see Paul coming into the picture with a whole new message, okay? The gospel of grace. Now, how do we know Israel was given extra time beyond the crucifixion to repent? Look at Luke 13. He spake also this parable, a certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. And he came and sought fruit thereon and found none. Then said he un unto the dresser of his vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree. Okay, this, this is a picture of the Lord Jesus coming to the nation of Israel seeking out believers. Okay, and this is a parable concerning that. Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree. We know the fig tree is a picture of the nation of Israel. And find none. Jesus didn't find any believers. So it says, cut it down, why cumbereth it to the ground? And he answering said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also till I shall dig about it and dung it. And if it bear fruit, well, if not, then after that thou shalt cut it down. Okay, so after the crucifixion, the gospel that was preached was still the gospel of the kingdom all the way up to the stoning of Stephen. The Lord gave them a little bit more time to repent and to believe that he was their Messiah. Okay, This is why we see in Peter and the little flock still teaching repent, be baptized, believe. Because they still had that chance to repent as a nation. And they still had a chance to usher in the kingdom of heaven. But when they killed Stephen, uh, their last prophet, God began a new gospel by converting Saul into the apostle Paul right and with Paul we have the birth of the gospel of grace and the birth of the body of Christ Jesus 
This new gospel, the gospel of grace, was a mystery revealed to Paul by Jesus Christ himself. The gospel of grace was a secret that God kept to himself before the foundation of creation until the day came that the nation of Israel uh, would reject Jesus as their Messiah. And this secret that God kept was that after the nation of Israel rejected Jesus Christ as their Messiah, he would build unto himself a body of believers outside of the nation of Israel. And he would make this body of believers fellow heirs with his son. He would, he would build a body of sons and daughters unto himself through grace, without works, and without the law. Okay, that's us. That's We're the body of Christ. So, the gospel of the kingdom was postponed with the death of Stephen. Then, the gospel of grace begins with Paul. And once the rapture takes place, the removal of the body of Christ will end the gospel of grace also. And then, it's going to reinstitute the gospel of the kingdom. Okay, his focus... God's focus is on the nation of Israel once again. After the rapture, he's going to focus on the nation of Israel. He's going to implement, once again, the earthly kingdom gospel, the second coming, and the 1,000-year millennial reign. And after the rapture, God will give the nation of Israel another chance okay, to repent as a nation and believe that Jesus Christ is their Messiah, and they'll have to endure until the end of Daniel's 70th week in order to be saved. They have two ways to make it. The, the nation of Israel has two ways to be saved during Daniel's 70th week. The first one is to repent and believe that Jesus Christ is their Messiah and they have to endure until the end of those seven years. And the second way they can make it is to repent and believe Jesus Christ is their Messiah and be martyred. All right. So when our Lord Jesus was walking on the earth, he gave his disciples a view of the future, far into the future, in fact. If you look at Matthew 24, our Lord tells the little flock uh, these events that would take place in the end days. Not only does he tell them the events, but our Lord puts them in the, the same order order as the seals in Revelation. Okay, If you look here with me at Matthew 24, the context here is that the disciples are asking Jesus what's going to take place at the end days just before the second coming. Matthew 24, For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars see that ye be not troubled for all these things must come to pass but the end is not yet for nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places all these all these are the beginning of sorrows then in the very next verse Jesus says then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake now let's stop right here for a moment we know that Jesus is talking about Daniel's 70th week and we also know that he's talking about the first four seals leading up to the abomination of desolation. And here's how we get there. If you look at Revelation 6, And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the, fur, the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that, that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth, conquering and to conquer. Notice how Revelation 6 here is speaking about the same thing as Matthew 24 in verse 4 and 5. Matthew verse uh, 24, 4, 5, And Jesus answered and said unto him, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. The first, four, the first seal being the Antichrist coming in the name of 
of Christ deceiving many. Okay, <clears throat> now let's look uh, back at Revelation 6, verse 3 and 4. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. Notice again, this is speaking about the very same thing that Jesus was talking about back in Matthew 24, verse 6 and 7. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, uh, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Now, go back to Revelation 5, uh, 6 and Chapter 6, verse 5 and 6. And when he opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And, be, and I beheld, and lo, a black horse. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. And see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. Now here Jesus is, mentions the same thing in Matthew 24, 7. The last half of the verse and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places and what is Je what does jesus say in the very next verse matthew 24 8 all these are the beginning of sorrows okay and they're commonly called today birth pangs that's where we get the phrase birth pangs the word birth pangs is not found in the king james version bible the birth pangs are in the king james version bible is actually the beginning of sorrows okay those are the same thing now jesus stops there in matthew because the very next things to happen is the abomination of desolation and we're now at the middle half of daniel's week now if you continue on in revelation 6 verse 8 and 9 you're going to discover that it's going into the time when the antichrist comes to full power under satan and we know this as the abomination of desolation the great tribulation and then he goes after the believers okay the nation of israel specifically the jewish believers who flee jerusalem uh, to be hid and provided for for 1260 days now if you look at mark chapter 13 verses 6 through 8 you're going to notice there also as well that the order is exactly the same order as the first three seals in revelation 6. then in mark jesus ends with these are the beginning of sorrows okay then he goes on to explain what happens the great tribulation the great sorrows the antichrist and so forth again revealing what the birth pangs are and when they're going to take place so we've just seen here by comparing scripture uh, Matthew, Mark, and Revelation, rightly dividing God's word, that Jesus calls the first three seals, which happen at the beginning of Daniel's week, okay, the first half, are the beginning of sorrows. These are the birth pangs, as most people are familiar with. So, if you see somebody preaching that we're going through the, the sorrows of the birth pangs right now, well, there's a problem. Now you can show them where the birth pangs or the sorrows really are in Scripture, they're in the first half of Daniel's week, and they're not happening right now. So, uh, with that, now let's let's go into what is the falling away for a bit. Um, the delusion for those left behind are, is going to be so strong that only the people God protects supernaturally, the elect, okay, are going to be able to withstand it. In Matthew twenty four twenty four, for there shall arise false Christ and false prophets. And shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they should deceive the very elect. The entire world is going to fall fall away. Okay, this is the apostasy. God is going to give the world a grand delusion to believe the lie. All right, but keep in mind here that this delusion is pointing more towards the nation of Israel. This is punishment and it's a punishment that's designed for them because they didn't believe in the first place all right the delusion <clears throat> will be that the antichrist is really the christ and they're going to follow the antichrist they're going to take his mark and uh they're going to be subject to god's wrath because of that unless you're one of the remnant jews being protected by god you don't have a chance so my advice 
to you is get saved now and don't wait okay now Paul goes on to explain uh, to the Thessalonians the details that would take place during uh, the next dispensation during that time and the start would be the seven-year tribulation okay this is what we're talking about Daniel's 70th week and the coming judgment upon the world the the coming false Christ the Antichrist the apostasy and, and so on and we see that in 2nd Thessalonians chapter 2 11 through 12 and for this cause God shall send them a strong delusion that they should believe a lie that they all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness and for this cause okay God will send them the nation of Israel a strong delusion who's the them here I just said it it's the nation of Israel so them these are the people who are going to be going through Daniel's 70th week seven years of trials and tribulation specifically for the salvation of the Jewish nation this isn't for the body of Christ here folks and that's why Paul is rebuking Thessalonians uh, because of this false teaching because of this uh, counterfeited letter that was going around somebody had forged Paul's name on some letters and it, it you know this forged letter was confusing everybody and Paul is trying to straighten out that mess here so in 2nd Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 3 Paul's talking about the seven year tribulation period correctly called again Daniel's 70th week um, what he's not talking about however is the dispensation of grace here okay the church those caught up before the seven year period begins that's not what Paul's talking about there uh, keep that in mind as we move along okay so now let's let's take a a closer look at this phrase falling away all right the Greek word that Paul uses here translated to falling away is the Greek word apostasia the definition of the word apostasia is that it is a defection from truth it is a falling away it is a forsaking okay now we need to look at another place here where the word apostasia is used over in Acts uh, Acts 21 21 and they are informed of thee that thou teachest all the Jews which are among the Gentiles to forsake there's that word apostasia Moses saying that they ought not to circumcise their children neither to walk after the customs so we see the same word here apostasia being used here in Acts 21 21 again in the context of forsaking Moses okay apostasia they were forsaking or falling away from what Moses had taught the Jews concerning the law so the phrase falling away in Thessalonians and the phrase forsaking in Acts both come from the Greek translation of the word apostasia so we go back to Paul's letter to the Thessalonians the phrase falling away mainstream churches teach that this falling away here is referring to the rapture of the church but when Paul talks about the rapture he uses the word harpazo to be caught up to snatched away now I made a video on the breakdown uh, the breakdown of the word harpazo uh, in another video on my channel and it's called rapture is not in the Bible or is it take a look at that video if you have any questions about the word harpazo where the word rapture comes from that's a good video to look into and so you can get a better idea of the words uh, the English words and the Greek words used in their translations okay so we already know Paul uses the word harpazo for the rapture are catching away uh, prior to the tribulation period so the question is why would Paul use another word a different word here for rapture uh, specifically we're talking about the word apostasia the falling away okay if the falling away was the rapture then Paul would have used the phrase caught up or herpazo and not apostasia so by rightly dividing we conclude here that Paul's not talking about the rapture or the departure of the body of Christ it's some false teachers out there like to teach Paul's describing the forsaking of belief here okay 
and he's specifically describing the after effects of what happens in verse 11 and for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie that they all might be damned who believed not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness okay so God is giving them a delusion and it's causing them to believe the lie the lie will be the false Christ pouring out miracles wonders the Antichrist causing the Jews to be tricked into forsaking God and following him instead okay that's the delusion the delusion is the nation of Israel believing that the Antichrist is their Messiah and the falling away happens when that happens that is the falling away they fall away from the true love the true faith the true Messiah and they go after the false Messiah so Paul's describing the events in the first half of Daniel's week here the, the first the falling away in order for the following way to happen you have to have the Antichrist in the picture and you have to have the delusion the lie in the picture so the following way has to happen after the rapture okay first we see the following way the forsaking following after the Antichrist then the abomination of desolation then the second coming the day of the Lord and so on so the whole context of this passage is about the day of the Lord but the forged letter called it the day of Christ and it was confusing the Thessalonians because Paul had taught them earlier that they they would be raptured caught up prior to these things happening so once the body of Christ is removed then the Jews the nation of Israel the unbelieving Jews will leave the integrity of the Old Testament prophets and prophecies okay like in Moses's writings and so on and they're gonna open themselves up to Satan's will and Satan is going to be more than eager to put the Antichrist into power to destroy the nation of Israel. Remember, at the beginning of this video, I told you Satan's goal is to get rid of every Jew on the planet. Okay? He knows if he can get rid of the Jews, then God cannot fulfill the promises and the covenants. Okay? This is Satan's sick mind. This is the way he thinks, all right? Now, God is, is, will give unbelieving Israel just what they want, a delusion for them to believe, the lie, that's going to cause the apostasia, the falling away. If you look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, uh, 9 through 12, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved and for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie that they all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness so the falling away the apostasy has nothing to do with the rapture or the harpazo the following way has nothing to do with departing from one place to another as in the rapture or some other physical location. Israel will be led into a false belief by the Antichrist during Daniel's 70th week because they refused to believe the truth when they had a chance to. God is giving them more than enough chances to believe. Okay, so now moving on to another topic. Uh, that's extremely important that we rightly divide is the teaching concerning the Church of Philadelphia the traditional teaching is that the body of Christ is the Church of Philadelphia because of certain words that we find in the passage but however if you rightly divide it's clear that the Church of Philadelphia cannot be the body of Christ and it's clearly uh, it, it, the Church of Philadelphia is clearly one of the seven Jewish assemblies in the time of Daniel's 70th week. Also note that they are the very same people who teach that the body of Christ... Now I'm speaking about these false teachers out there that teach the Church of Philadelphia is the body of Christ. Okay, Note that they also are the very same people that teach the body of Christ is the uh, you know is the bride of Christ 
and that we're coming back with Christ at the second coming and that we're going to have the marriage supper of the Lamb, some big celebration for the saints. And the parables of Jesus in, in the book of Matthew, Mark, and Luke are all about the rapture and about the church and blah, 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 blah. Okay? The, everything they teach is all twisted. It's not too hard to figure out that these so-called preachers out there teaching these things also teach that the body of Christ is the church of Philadelphia. Okay? Then that's a big red flag. And it points directly to another false teaching based on, you know, tradition versus right division. All right? What you find out there, 99%, you'll find tradition. And you'll find 1% right division. So now right off the bat we know according to right division and understanding of dispensations that the body of Christ is long gone prior to the beginning of Daniel's 70th week. I just showed you that with the falling away, with the rapture, with the falling away happening because of the Antichrist being here. And we already know that in order for the Antichrist to be here and come to power that the restrainer, okay, uh, or the one that withholds, according to the King James Version Bible, Paul mentions and talks about the with, the one that withholds, okay, and but people know this passage as the restrainer, he that restraineth or withholdeth. Well, he that restraineth or withholdeth is the spirit filled the holy spirit filled body of christ we have to be removed before the antichrist can come to power so we have we're we're gone before daniel 70th week even begins okay and you know that if you rightly divide so also we know that there's a group of jewish believers who are protected from the antichrist during daniel 70th week as well and we also know that the nation of Israel is going to have to repent and they're going to have to believe and they're going to have to endure until the end. So let's take a look at a passage in question here and break it down according to right division. In Revelation 3, And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth, and, and shutteth and no man openeth, <clears throat> I know thy works. Okay, there's a hint. The word works. He's not saying I know thy faith, right? Faith belongs to the body of Christ. Works belongs to the nation of Israel. So again, I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door. No man can uh, can shut it, for thou hast little strength and hast kept my word. And has not denied my name. Now when would they be denying his name? That would be before the falling away. The Antichrist. Remember God creates a delusion. The lie. And those that deny his name. Are going to be those that follow the Antichrist. This, that's going to be the falling away. Verse 9. Behold I will make them of the synagogue of Satan. Which say they are Jews and are not. But do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and know that I have loved thee. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Uh, behold, I come quickly, hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Him that overcometh, overcometh, there's another key word, will I make a pillar in the temple of my God and he shall go no more out and I will write upon him the name of God and the name of the city of my God which is new Jerusalem which cometh down out of heaven from my God and I will write upon him my new name he that hath an ear let him hear what the spirit saith unto the churches okay so we see here our Lord Jesus speaking to the Jewish assemblies which for the most part are caught up in religion instead of turning to Jesus Christ as our Messiah. Now the only exception here uh, of these seven Jewish assemblies is the assembly of Philadelphia, okay, who have not denied his name. Notice also that the common thread with these churches is religious works, 
okay clearly we see the nation of Israel in all seven assemblies also notice the lack of Paul's gospel the lack of salvation by faith alone without works in fact the only assembly of these seven assemblies here in Revelation that Paul mentions in all his 13 books is the assembly at Ephesus. Paul never mentions Smyrna, Pergamus, Thyatira, uh, Sardis, Philadelphia, or Laodicea. So I ask you if these assemblies listed in Revelation are all part of the body of Christ, then why didn't our Lord have the Apostle Paul address any of them in his ministries? Especially if the assembly of Philadelphia was part of the body of Christ. Surely, Paul would have mentioned this body of believers somewhere in his books, but not once does he mention Philadelphia. Okay. Another way we can look at this is if our Lord Jesus was addressing the body of Christ here in Revelation, then why did he leave out the majority? Why would he leave out 99% of the body of Christ and only address one assembly? Okay. Just Jesus doesn't address the assembly at Corinth or Galatia or Philippi or the Colossians or the Thessalonians. All right, our Lord Jesus gives us an important clue as to who's being addressed here in the book of Revelation. And there's a very important phrase that keeps uh, that he's using over and over again. Notice he keeps repeating the phrase to him that overcomes, I will. The word I want you to pay special attention to is the word overcome. Okay, overcome what? What do these assemblies need to overcome? The fact that Jesus is telling them that they still need to overcome also points to the fact that at the time Jesus is speaking, they still hadn't overcome, right? They were still falling short of some prize, so to speak. So first, these assemblies are going to have to overcome their blindness. They'll need to overcome the Antichrist. They'll need to overcome the delusions that causes the falling away. And they'll have to overcome and endure until the end. In the dispensation of grace, the way we're saved today is by faith and not through works. So our overcoming some obstacle and making it till the end doesn't make any sense. <clears throat> so... The language Jesus uses here in Revelation points to how they will be saved. How the nation of Israel will have to overcome the obstacles of Daniel's 70th week. And that includes uh, the church of Philadelphia at some point. <clears throat> the Jewish assembly at Philadelphia. These are believing Jews at the time of Daniel's 70th week. Okay, And God will protect uh, them from the delusion and the falling away and the wrath of the Antichrist and so on the assembly at Philadelphia are those Jews within the nation of Israel that are following the teaching of the two witnesses and the 144,000 servants of the Most High uh, the assembly at Philadelphia are, are an example for the rest of the Jews to follow at the time of Daniel's 70th week the assembly of Philadelphia during the 70th week of Daniel is not the body of Christ has nothing to do with us today the rapture will have, have taken part already long before this happens and uh, will be with our Lord Jesus in heaven at this point okay so what about the two witnesses now well the two witnesses will be warning the Jews that they're in the 70th week of Daniel but mostly they're going to be preaching the the kingdom gospel People are going to need faith plus works. They're going to have to repent and believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. And they're going to have to have endurance. They're going to have to make it to the end. In order for the nation of Israel to be saved, they need to repent as a nation. All right, That's important to understand. They need to repent as a nation. Meaning they need to turn away from non-belief in Christ. They need to turn to belief in Christ as their Messiah. They need, uh, they need to repent from idolatry. They need to turn to Jesus Christ as their Messiah. And they need to make it to the end of the 70th week without losing their salvation. Uh, I'm sorry. Without losing their faith or turning back to the world's idols, especially the Antichrist. 
Now keep in mind, the earthly kingdom will be filled with believing Jews, okay, who endure to the end of the tribulation period. And the believing Jews will be ushered into the kingdom. They're gonna be they're gonna get married, they're gonna have children, that repopulate the earth. Okay? So back to the two witnesses, God is gonna put them on earth to preach for three and a half years. Look at Revelation chapter eleven, and I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days clothed in sackcloth. Now some are gonna believe what the two witnesses are preaching, and most of them will be the nation of Israel. And only a small remnant from those Jews are actually going to make it. And most are going to be killed by the Antichrist. Most are going to follow the delusion, the lie. They're going to fall away. They're, you know, they're going to be, and those that believe are going to be martyred and the rest are going to be protected by God himself till the end. So there's some evidence that the Jews who flee the Antichrist those that are supernaturally protected are going to flee to the east towards Jordan. And uh, there some say that they're going to flee to a, 45, a fortified city called Petra. But I'm not 100% positive about Petra. I am positive that God is going to provide a location for them to be hid from the wrath of Satan for the remainder of the 70th week. Specifically the last half or the time that's known as Jacob's trouble. Now scripture tells us that Jesus will provide a way for them to escape the Antichrist's fury. Look here at Zechariah 14, uh, verse 3. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations, as when he fought in the day of battle. And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the, in the midst thereof towards the east and towards the west. And there shall be a very great valley, and half the mountain shall remove towards the north, and the other half shall go towards the south. And ye shall flee to the valley of the mountains, for the valley of the mountains shall reach unto Azel. Okay, so and they're going to be provided for and protected. Uh, just like God provided and protected the Israelites during the Exodus. The, now there's also the 144,000 elect. These are the Jewish males. 12,000 males from each of the 12 tribes. And 12,000 times 12,000 makes 144,000 of the virgin males uh, who are also going to be protected. These are very special people who are going to be chosen, uh, the elect, the, the remnant. And they're going to be sealed. The 144,000 are, are, again, the remnant that God chooses for himself to be saved out of the nation of Israel and God places his seal on them look at Revelation 7 verse 1 through 4 and after these things I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth holding the four winds of the earth that the wind should not blow in the earth nor in the sea nor any tree and I saw another angel ascending from the east having the seal of the living God and cried with a cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and they were sealed in hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Also, God sends angels to preach to the world, the, to the remotest parts of the earth. These angels are going to go there and preach to everyone in their own language. And we see exactly what they're going to be preaching in Revelation 14. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come and worship him that made the earth uh, made the heaven and the earth and the sea and the fountains of the waters and there followed another angel saying babylon is fallen is fallen that great city because she made all the nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication and the third angel followed them saying with a loud voice 
if any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand okay so we see who's preaching uh, during that time we see the two witnesses we see the 144,000 we see the angels now let's look at some particulars about the judgments that are going to be taking place during this time God chooses seven angels to administer the judgment and each angel we're gonna have a specific duty uh, at a specific time okay and we see that each of the seven angels has a trumpet and a vial and these trumpets uh, will blow consecutively one after the other during the entire seven year period and after each after each sounding of their trumpet they're gonna unleash the specific judgment that God has planned for them and these are the vile judgments okay the most severe of God's wrath they're gonna see the people on earth during that time they're, they're gonna see new land uh, rising from the ocean they're gonna see land masses sinking into the ocean it is gonna be total annihilation like they've never seen before uh, there's nuclear events happening the Sun is seven times hotter the moon goes dark and then eventually the Sun goes dark and much more okay and the water throughout the earth is going to be poisoned and undrinkable and most food is going to be destroyed actually the the Lord reveals that food is going to be so rare at this time that the price of wheat and barley is going to be equal to a, a person's wages for a day Revelation 6 and when he had opened the third seal I heard the third beast come and say come and see and I beheld and lo a black horse and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand and I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say a measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny and see thou hurt not the oil and the wine so here we see that the price of wheat and barley is just is going to be equal to a day's wages so can you imagine how expensive just a loaf of bread is going to be and imagine on top of that there's not going to be jobs for everyone most people are going to be unemployed at this point living off rations or whatever you know the Antichrist is going to force them to take his mark in order to eat food that's how he's going to get people he's going to either you starve or worship the beast worship the Antichrist so the next thing if we go on to taking a look at the second coming if you look at the parables in Matthew Luke and Mark uh, the dragnet parable the wheat and tares parable uh, the parable about uh, the ones taken it and the ones left in the field the virgin parable uh, the parables are all about the day of the Lord the second coming after the rapture okay at the Lord's return he comes with his army dressed in white uh, all in white riding on horses and white horses Revelation 19 <clears throat> verse 11 through 14 I saw heaven open and behold a white horse and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true and righteousness he doth uh, judge and make war his eyes were as a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns and he had a name written that no man knew but himself and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood and his name is called the Word of God and the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses clothed in fine linen white and clean verse 14 here is assumed to be a reference to the, the body of Christ uh, but we know uh, and people assume this body of Christ because uh, these individuals are wearing white and clean and fine linen and so on uh, in verses 7 and 9 it leads many to conclude uh, that you know again this is the body of Christ but let's see exactly who these people are in Revelation 19 7 through 9 let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the lamb is come and his wife hath made herself ready and to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen clean and white for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints and he 
saith unto me, Right blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. Now, while Revelation 19.14 is often assumed to be a reference to the church or the body of Christ, Jesus Christ here provides the correct interpretation Okay, regarding who accompanies him at the second coming. When you look at Matthew 25, 31, we're told who these this army is dressed in white, riding on white horses. Matthew 25, 31, when the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. Matthew 16, 27, for the Son of Man shall come in his glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. In Mark 8, 38, Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. In Luke 9, 26, For whosoever shall be ashamed of me of my works, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he shall come in his own glory and in his fathers and of the holy angels <clears throat> so the creatures that are described that accompany jesus at the second coming are angels they're not it's not the body of christ dear friends these are angels and the angels wear white clothes look at mark 16 5 and entering into the sepulcher they saw a young man sitting on the right side clothed in a long white garment and they were frightened now we know that young man was dressed in white in the sepulcher sitting when Jesus had risen. It was an angel. In Acts 1.10 And while they, they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by, stood by them in white apparel. Those were, remember, those were two angels that stood by. So are we going to believe the words of the Lord Jesus in the King James Bible when he says that angels are going to accompany him? Or are we going to continue to believe church tradition okay, that tell us that the body of Christ is coming back with Jesus at the second coming? The first thing these angels are going to do okay, when they come back with our Lord uh, is they're going to gather the unbelievers. We read the example of that in the parable of the wheat and tares. In Matthew 13, 30, Let both grow together until the harvest, and in the time of harvest I will say to the reapers, those are the angels, Gather ye together first the tares, okay, and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. In fact, the parable of the dragnet, the wheat and the tares, the two in the field, one taken, one left, and the virgins, etc., are all about the second coming event where Jesus has the angels gather up the non-believers first and then they're all destroyed unto death then the angels gather the believers after that and they're all brought into the barn into the earthly kingdom now I've made videos on all these parables please watch a video uh, that I made on this it's called uh, Matthew 24 the ones removed okay in that video I talk about Matthew 24 and also in Luke 17 uh, which happens to be the same parable but Luke records something extra that's very important in Luke the disciples asked Jesus where are the ones being removed where are they being taken to okay in 17 Luke 17 verse 37 and uh, and Jesus tells them they're being taken to where the eagles gather. Okay, let's read that real quick. And they answered and said unto him, Where, Lord? And he said unto them, uh, where, who's, Wheresoever the body is, thither will the eagles be gathered together. So we, see, we can see here that the order of things that happen uh, immediately after the second coming, after Daniel's 70th week, the seven-year tribulation will be the exact opposite in the order of, uh, then the rapture is okay which happens prior to the seven years or Daniel's 70th week you see at the rapture the believers are the ones being removed from the earth and the unbelievers are the ones left behind okay to deal with the famine the death and the antichrist and so on and we see the opposite here uh, at the second coming 
So the ones left on earth are the believers and the ones taken are unbelievers. Okay, it's the complete opposite from what happens at the rapture. All right. Now, just to repeat that, at the rapture, the body of Christ is taken from the earth. Unbelievers are left behind. At the second coming, at the end of Daniel's 70th week, at the second coming, it's the opposite. The ones taken off the earth are unbelievers. The angels take them to where the eagles are, the vultures. Okay, this is death and destruction. They're removed, just like in Noah's day. The ones removed were the ones that were killed in the flood. The ones that were saved were the ones uh, in the ark. Noah and his family. So the second coming is the same thing as Noah's flood. The, the same order of things. And the rapture is just the opposite. All right. So the population of the earth at this point is going to be very small. And we see that in the book of Isaiah. It talks about the population. Uh, Isaiah 24, 6. Therefore hath the curse devoured the earth, and they that dwell therein are desolate. Therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burned, and few men left. In Isaiah 13, 11, 13, And I will punish the world for their evil, and the wicked for their iniquity. And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease, and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. And I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. Therefore, I will shake the heavens and the earth shall remove out of her place in the wrath of the Lord of hosts and in the day of his fierce anger. Also, another verse where we see how rare mankind is going to be by the end of the tribulation period is in Matthew 24 verse 22 and except those days should be shortened there should no flesh be saved but for the elect's sake those days shall be shortened <clears throat> okay look at what jesus is saying here in that verse is the days are shortened to keep the elect alive those are the ones he protects so basically the rest of the world is they're not really going to have a chance, folks. Do you really believe that there's a second chance if you miss the rapture? Nevertheless, all the Gentile nations remaining, uh, whatever's left, is going to be, they're all going to be brought before the Lord at the throne of his glory at the second coming. And again, he's going to separate the, the sheep from the goat at this point. And to the sheep, he's going to say, Come, ye blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. And to the goat, he's going to say, <clears throat> Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, uh, the lake of fire, and prepared for the devil and his angels. Thus, the earthly kingdom, the kingdom of heaven on earth, will begin with only saved people, the sheep. The nation of Israel. And the believers are going to. They're going to have earthly bodies. To repopulate the earth. They're going to be able to get married. And in Zechariah 14.6 we see. And 14.16. Uh, and it shall come to pass. That everyone that is left. Of all the nations. Which came against Jerusalem. Shall even go up from year to year. To worship the king. The Lord of hosts. To keep the feast of tabernacles states that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts. So what about the marriage supper of the Lamb? Well, in Revelation 19, And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of the heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God, that ye may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses and of them that sit on them and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. The marriage supper of the Lamb, my friends, certainly is not a meal for Christians. Okay? 
period. Actually, the marriage supper of the Lamb is a graphic event on the earth. It is the violent end of Satan's reign over the earth. Okay, also called the Great Supper, uh, the Supper of the Great God. It's when Jesus Christ literally feeds the birds with the flesh of his now defeated enemies. You see, all the armies of the Antichrist, all Israel's enemies, are going to vanquish when Jesus returns with his angels, his armies, okay? And all the fowls, all the birds of the air are going to be called to eat the corpses of those gathered against Israel those that wanted to destroy her. Our Lord Jesus is going to marry his wife, the woman who is the nation of Israel. And to celebrate that occasion, he invites all the fowls of the heaven to come and devour the flesh of his how his now slain enemies. Right? So, it's going to be a celebration that the earth is now belongs to God. Okay? And Satan and his minions are going to be removed and they're going to be confined to the bottomless pit and in hell. And Israel marries God and she is forgiven, she's redeemed, she's justified and sanctified, she's made right. And you know she moves into her homeland, the promised land, to stay there forever. And God will marry to that land and to the nation of Israel. Okay? And that is the only celebration. But the, the marriage supper of the Lamb, my friends, I have a video on that as well. Uh, please take a look at it. I go a little bit more, you know, a little bit deeper into that. There's more information in that video. So if you're not sure what the marriage supper of the Lamb is, please, please look at that video. There's a lot of information in there and it's good. If you think the marriage supper of the Lamb has anything to do with the body of Christ, then you need to watch that video. All right? People often assume that the marriage supper of the Lamb uh, is for us, and it's not. And what happens is they confuse the marriage supper of the Lamb with the judgment seat of Christ. Okay, and that's because they assume that we're the bride getting married to the Lamb. Okay, and they assume that the marriage supper of the Lamb is a celebration between Jesus and the body of Christ, and nothing could be further from the truth. That it's all twisted up. It's all tradition. And it's all false teaching. Alright? So it's important that you understand who we are, the body of Christ, who the nation of Israel is, okay? And who the woman is, and who the wife is, and all these terms you really truly need to understand. And the only way you can do that is by rightly dividing and understanding dispensations. So the tribulation martyrs are... Uh, they're raised up at the second coming, okay, including the disciples, uh, the little flock. And Jesus, Jesus promises that the disciples would reign over Israel. Look here at Luke 22, 29 and 30. And I appointed, I appoint unto you a kingdom, as my Father hath appointed unto me, that ye may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and sit on thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And there he was promising his uh, apostles, his, his disciples, that they would sit and judge the nation of Israel, the 12 tribes. So in order to do that, they're going to have to be brought back to life, right? Well, they are. They're going to be resurrected at the, the end of Daniel's 70th week. Now, the devil, Satan, he's going to be chained up at the end of that 70th week. Michael, the archangel, is going to chain Satan up and throw him into a pit where he's going to be for a thousand years during the millennial reign. And the false prophet and the Antichrist are going to be thrown in the lake of fire. Peace is finally going to be realized for a thousand years. Um, and then at the end of the thousand years, uh, at the end of those thousand years, then there's we're looking at uh, there's so much information about the tribulation period in the the 1000 year millennial but we're going to just jump to uh the end of the 1000 years we're going to have the great white throne judgment where all the law, the lost people 
will uh, resurrect from the graves to attend their judgment and then God's going to deal with them accordingly and also the angels will be judged then the earth will be destroyed by fire along with uh, this heaven and a new earth and a new heaven will be created with God and his children ruling over everything together in peace and in harmony in Revelation 21 and there came unto me one of the seven angels would had which had the seven vials uh, full of the seven last plagues and talked with me saying come hither I will show thee the bride the lamb's wife the new Jerusalem will be ushered in now my question to you for your homework is why is she called the lamb's wife here she's no longer called bride she's called wife I'll leave that for you to study so in closing uh, one thing I something else I wanted to mention is at the end of the 1000 year reign uh, Satan is is taken out of the pit unchained for a short period of time so to gather an army uh, to fight against Christ Jesus once again and he's going to gather a massive army and head them towards Jerusalem and this is where uh, God finally puts an end to Satan and his people once and for all uh, Jesus uh, with the breath of his lips wipes Satan out and destroys all of his uh, people that are following him that want to destroy you know Christ Jesus and the nation of Israel and his people and at that point they're thrown into the lake of fire and Satan is destroyed once and for all and forever so with that end in closing uh, we've taken a glimpse into the 70th week of Daniel and that was a lot of information from one video it was an hour an hour and 27 minutes an hour and 30 minute video so we looked at why it's called Daniel 70th week we looked at the purpose for the seven years uh, we looked at the uh, God's agenda versus Satan's agenda and you know we looked at uh, Jesus revealing the four seals prior to the book of Revelation how those things correlated together the falling away the delusion the two witnesses the 144,000 Jewish males uh, we looked at the second coming of our Lord Jesus in Revelation 12 we looked at that the sign that's coming up next year in the 23rd and 23rd September uh, we looked at some parables that Jesus spoke about in Matthew and Mark and Luke and we also looked at who the Church of Philadelphia is so that's a lot of information for one video now if I can leave you with just one thing to remember is that our rapture is close and there's still a lot of lost souls out there so please please folks plant as many seeds as you possibly can while we still have a chance okay yeah uh, we have little very little time left to do it so be comforted saints you know we're not appointed to wrath we've been made righteous in Christ Jesus and we're appointed unto salvation and we're sanctified and made righteous in his sight so thanks for studying with me saints and uh, peace and grace in Christ Jesus be with all of you and I'll see you next time Lord willing